and I don't have much money. But Lord, I have you, and to me that's all that matters. Though the world may not see, thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. There's a roof up above me. I've a good tonight has, uh, has been on my heart for a couple of months now, and i preached it before, but, and so for the teenagers, you've heard a shortened version of this before, but I believe it's a needed message for the time that we're in, and uh, I just want to say tonight, first off, turn your uh, Bibles to the book of John, I want to say tonight that we're at uh, a time in history that, you know, we've never seen anything like the things that are going on now, okay. now, I don't know how uh, Sodom and Gomorrah were, but when the Lord destroyed them, they were uh, desperately wicked. I just can't imagine how much worse uh, they could have been than us, but we're headed in that direction. The book of John, we're going to start tonight, um, just kind of put it on the bottom shelf for everybody, for the youngest in here to the oldest in here. Talk about a very simple um, subject. But just to begin with some basics, in the, in the Gospel of John, chapter 1, in verse 1, the Bible says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And I'll open up a word of prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for everything you've done for us, Lord. I just pray that you would have your blessing on this message tonight, Lord. I pray that you would, uh, Lord, capture the hearts and minds of the people, Lord. I pray that you would uh, let this uh, message, Lord, uh, change lives. Lord, I just pray that you would help me, give me the words to speak. God, I pray that you would just calm my nerves, Lord. I pray yeah. that you would uh, give me boldness. And Lord, I just pray that you would uh, fill me with your spirit. I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, the book of John, in chapter 1, verse 1, we just read it. And it's really, it's a, it's a verse everyone should probably know. Uh, really, from the youngest in here to the oldest in here could probably quote it. And with some exceptions. But, you know, it is a very rudimentary verse. And, and most people would, uh, it's, it's easy to understand. But to, to get where we're going, we have to start someplace, and why not start at the beginning? So in, where it says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, we learn something about God, and that is His book, His Bible, it, it, is equal to Him. He it, is, right. is the Word, it, and, uh, and the Word is Him. Now turn over to Genesis, and I bet you can imagine where we're going with this, speaking of the beginning. Genesis chapter 1, and in verse 1, it says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Now, if God is the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and God created the heaven and the earth, we could say there's a pretty uh, high importance of words. There's a pretty high uh, importance of the Word that was the, the earth spoken into existence by God. Right. God creates the world. The, the, the Word created the world. They're the same. And as it says in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Well, the Bible is the truth. God is the truth. Now, these are all synonymous terms, and it's important that we understand that just as an introductory truth. Uh, you know, what we want to talk about tonight is the truth and a couple of lies. 
some small lies and a big lie. And I want to talk to you tonight. The title of the message tonight is The Big Lie. And I hope that I can, I can present this in a way that makes sense to every person in this room. The Big Lie, we're going to turn over to Genesis in chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. It says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day that ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Now we talk about the lies the devil tells, and as Pastor says, the devil is unmatching his ability to deceive. One of the things that the devil said is, yea, hath God said, he was trying to supplant something into the, uh, the mind of Eve. And he was trying to get her to doubt, cast some doubt on what the word of God said, what the, what the Lord said, which you know, eventually will become what the Bible says. And as he tries to cast that doubt, we notice some deception there. But that's not the first lie. That's not the first lie that he said. He says, the first lie he says is, ye shall not surely die. You know, dece deception and lies, they're not quite the same thing. But the lie that he tells is, ye shall not surely die. But notice the second thing that he says, the second lie he tells, in verse 5 it says, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. <clears throat> now the point of the message and what I would like to get across to you today is whether you know it or not, whether, whether you want to believe it or not, the doctrine that Satan pushes here, that ye shall be as gods, is the problem with America today. Yeah. The problem with America today, and it's not, a, it's not a religion of humanism that I'm addressing here. I know that that is. That's, that's serving yourself as God. But the problem is the humanists acknowledge that that's what they're doing. Today we live in a world where we don't even realize that's what we're doing. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try to show that to you tonight uh, through a couple of examples and God created man for his pleasure. That's Revelation 4.11. We won't turn there. It talks about God creating man for his pleasure. And if we look around today, man is self-serving. And all that is done is to glorify ourselves. It's glorify their God. And who is their God? It's them. Everything is done for their pleasure. Everything is done for themselves. The big lie started in the Garden of Eden. It's been growing steadily in population or popularity ever since. And there are movements today as a direct result of this big lie. I'll give you some examples. Transgenderism, the belief that you are whatever gender that you choose yourself to be, has nothing to do with the way you were born. But your identity is so malleable that you can be one gender one day, the other gender the next day, and on, on Fridays you can be a horse if you want to. It doesn't matter. There's no rules anymore because you are the creator. It is up to you. You know... There's such a flaw in that because God created you, individual, right. with your specific characteristics Amen. as a male or as a female. Amen. And what we've done Amen. today is we've replaced God as the Amen. creator. We've turned ourselves into the creator. In fact, we are, and they talk, they talk about this all the time nowadays, is that we believe there's three, there's three parts of yourself. There's a spiritual being, you're, uh, the body, and then there's the heart and all that. Well, you know... The world today believes that your body and your spirit, your body and your self-identity are two completely separate things. They believe that whether you are, a, even if you are a man, you can, you can believe. As long as you believe that you're an alligator, then that's what you are. And I, I'm, not, I'm, I, I'm trying to be funny, but at the same time tonight, people, this is what's happening. Yeah, is. Today, right. we live in a world so stupid that you yeah. are able to identify as an inanimate objects. You're able to identify, and they have a new movement going on. Uh, my, my, pronoun, my pronouns that, are cho that I chose for myself, instead of saying he or him, they're saying Z and Zim, X-E or X-I-M. Does that make any sense? Those aren't even words. I mean, really, and we're, we're moved to where this is the common thing. This is the acceptable thing. We'll move on from that. Abortion, your will, your life, your convenience are above the value of anything or anyone else. You choose who lives and who dies. Life is a privilege granted by you, and it can be stripped away if it causes you too much grief or it's too inconvenient for you. 
We live in a day and age today where before when God was the one who gives the life, before when God was the one who decides when the time was that the, a person would die, well, now it's in our hands. And not as it, it's, it's always been where you could, you could kill, right? But now it's morally acceptable to kill. It's morally okay to kill. We're living in the day and age where we are normalizing murder of our babies. We're, we're normalizing the mass genocide of the future of America. Yeah. There's a problem here. The problem is that we've decided that the moral code that we've chosen for ourselves, that's all there is to it. There's no Bible. There's no God. None of all that's subjective. And if you want to believe in it, you know, that's, that's on you. But, but I'm going to make the rules for my life. You know, if we all lived inside that reality, laws couldn't exist. If we all lived inside the reality that what I think is right is the most important thing, you couldn't say it's wrong to go steal a car. Well, I want that car. It's mine. I want it. We let, we're acting like toddlers now. We say, give me, give me, give me. Yeah. We're acting like children. And we've, we've resorted back to this mindset as Satan tried to tempt Eve in the garden. We talk about something called cancel culture. And if you've heard of it, you know what I'm talking about. What it says is, well, what their mindset is, if you don't like something, it's evil. But if you do like it, it's good. But if I like it and you don't, that doesn't just make, that doesn't mean we disagree. That means you're evil. I'm good. Because you disagree with what I believe is good. Uh, is everyone following me here? So we're, we're making our own rules and expecting everyone else to play by them. And it doesn't really work out great when the people who are, the only people who are not playing by them are the Baptists who are following the Bible, are, are the Christians who are following what God has said, and it doesn't work out great for us. And we've changed the meaning behind the words that we use. We've changed the, we've changed the uh, absolute definition of, of some of the things. Pastor talked today about the Shalvin trial, and you can have your own opinion on it. I, I said before, you know, I don't think the trial was right, but if you sat on the jury, would you have said innocent and then have Black Lives Matter come and blow, blow your house up? I don't know. Right. But I will say that to say that that was justice just because they put it in a court system yeah. doesn't change that that was just revenge. It was revenge because a group of people got fed up, a group of people got fed up with the law being enforced. They wanted revenge on the law being enforced, and they wanted, they, people would like to see innocent men trying just to do their job and protect people go to jail for that, and they, they castigate them as murderers and things like that, but we've changed that definition. I know that's not popular to say, but it's the truth. Yeah, we've changed right. definitions of even some silly things. You know, you can't say the word literally anymore. The word literally has been changed in definition in, in the dictionary to mean figuratively. <laughs> the, the exact antonym of literally is, is, is figuratively. That's in the definition today. So I, I was thinking about it. You know, I, I, got, I got so mad at somebody, I was, I was literally going to rip his head off. So you mean to tell me you were going to go up and you were going to pop and just take it off? <laughs> no, of course not. But today that actually makes sense because we've changed the definition so far. We've changed the definition of so many words. And why is that so, uh, why, why is that so important to bring up? You know, you notice, as soon as you catch them on a definition, they change it again. Yes. As soon as you catch up, you're like, wait a minute, that doesn't, that's not like abortion, for instance. Abo what about murder? Well, they, they changed they, they, they're talking about aborting it. Well, we said, well, you're killing a baby. No, no, we're aborting a fetus. That's what right. they want to say. Yeah. Another thing they would like to say, uh, we talk about what, you know, left versus right, conservatives, Republicans or Democrats, whatever. But, you know, uh, it's funny, throughout the years they've changed from, they were at one time progressives, then they were liberals, then they were leftists, and now they're just evil. <laughs> We've literally got into so many different, and not, now we're, we're struggling for a loss. We're even arguing amongst ourselves, what do these words even mean? But it's confusion. And what does the devil want to do? Yeah. He wants to cast doubt in your heart. Yeah. And he wants to make you, uh, something that he will want to do is make you believe that you're the one in the wrong. In a lot of these situations. Yeah, that's right. You know, you talk about how the devil uses that. I'll go on. I don't want to skip ahead of myself, but the devil tries to deceive in so many ways, and we'll talk about it in a few minutes. But the world has tried to turn things like science. Anyone heard the phrase, follow the science? Yeah. Anyone heard the, the, the phrase, trust the science, believe the science? But they try to use things like science, 
and philosophy, and they try to use it into clubs to bully religion. And not just religion, yeah. but truths, the Bible. Yeah. And talking about their, their reasoning behind this, they use these things in philosophy. They're called philosophical razors. They're tools, they're, they're, they're tools to use to shave off, that's why they're called razors, shave off explanations for a possibility of something that are less likely. Now, some of them, there's one called the Occam's razor. The simplest of competing theories is more often the correct one. Let me ask you this, if this philosophy was meant to try and answer questions that God already answered in the Bible, why did they choose something so right. dumb like this? Right. Occam's razor is the simpler of competing theories is the most correct is probably the correct one. What's more simple, evolution right. or creation? Right. What's right. more simple, <laughs> a, 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 an almighty, all-powerful God with an intelligent Amen. design created yeah. the world, or yeah. we all evo evolved some, from some amniotic soup in the ground, right. and we've turned into, right. first we were fish, then lizards, then we became birds, then turned into monkeys, now we're here, and surprisingly, now we're devolving and turning into <laughs> idiots. I mean, literally, we have not come any further since that first evolutionary cycle, according to them. But we have, we, they're using philosophy to try and undermine religion. They're trying to use science to undermine religion. They have another razor, and it's called Hanlon's razor. It says, never attribute malice to that which is adequately explained by human ignorance. Now, here's where... I have to start saying some things I don't want to, some things that are hard for me to admit. When the world goes and they, and, and they say things that are just plain out stupid, they, it seems like they're just against God. It seems like they hate God. It seems like they hate the church. It seems like they hate the Bible. But you know what? And something that we have to constantly remind ourselves of is many people have never even heard truly of the God that they claim to hate. They've never even heard truly the Bible that they claim to be against. They've heard other people's takes on the Bible. Maybe. But how many of those people have ever went through the plan of salvation and said, I fully understand it and don't want it? And I would hesitate to say very many. But today we have to have Jesus' mindset. Jesus said, forgive them for they know not what they do. Many times the world's sin is a result of ignorance rather than hatred toward the things of God. And it's so interesting to me that the world uses philosophy and science to try and they deify that in place of God. And every time, every time you turn around, you can use science and you can use the laws of philosophy to come right back around to God is the creator. He's the final authority. He's the one who establishes the moral right and wrong, the consequences for those actions as well. The enemy, now this is important, the enemy would like to change the truth of God into a lie. Turn over to Romans in chapter 1. We're talking about who is that enemy? You know, we'll, we'll see in a minute, but who is that enemy that I'm talking about there in Romans in chapter 1? Well, if I ever get there. But Romans chapter 1, and we'll be in verse uh, 22 through 25. The, they want to change the truth of God into a lie. We've all heard this before, this whole chapter, and it talks about really where we're at today in America. It says in verse 22, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. And let me stop right there. The people that are shoving the wicked agenda uh, down your throat today are all college-educated elites. They are the ones who have spent the most time in school, the ones who have become so smart that they've become so dumb. The problem with the liberal friends that we have, it's not that they're so dumb, it's that they're so wise about things that aren't true, right? They know so much about the spectrum of gender that doesn't exist. There's two. It's not hard. But Romans chapter 1 and verse 22 says, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. And change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like yeah. to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Yeah. Amen. You know, something interesting about that is the thing that they... 
what the, what the Bible talks about there when it talks about them changing the truth of God into a lie, the main emphasis is that they changed the creature into the creator. Yeah. They have changed you and me into the one who made the rules. The one who, who decides who lives, who dies. Decide what's morally right and wrong. Decide where we, you know, the government would decide if you can go to church or not. The government would decide, you know, whether you can uh, afford, <laughs> well, I won't go there, but, you know, the, 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 de the devil has put in our minds today that we can be God. Yes. He has, and whether we believe it, whether we know that that's what it's talking about or not, it's the truth. And um, turn over to Ephesians in chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6, and we're going to have, we're going to read verse 12. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, and it says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Yeah. You know, when I talk about the enemy, what I mean is not the liberals. It's not the communists. It's not the Marxists. It's not even the people that, when we come in contact with, would like to see us gone. The enemy is safe. Right. And... We do a poor job at identifying that because the Lord, the Word of uh, God says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but a prince about principalities and of powers. And, you know, each and every one of us have misidentified the threat at some point. We want to get mad and shake our fists at those who would oppose what the church is doing. Can I ask you why they would oppose the, what the church is doing? Maybe it's because they've never been witness to. Maybe it's because they've never had the opportunity to be in a good church. You know, we so often would like to just blame and cast and cast cast stones, and we would like to get mad at these lost sinners. What about you? Where would you be without the Lord Jesus Christ saving your soul? I think about if I wasn't raised in a Christian home. Right. You know, we do so much for our Christian brothers and sisters. We, you know, if they're struggling, we help them out. What about, what about the ones who don't have that church family? What about the ones who they're living in, you know, a poverty and they don't have, they don't have anyone? Of course, they're mad at God because they think that, you know, they they're entitled to the same things you are, and they're saying, well, if they get them and I don't get them, then God's unjust and God doesn't love me as much as they love. Of course, they're mad at God. They've never really got to experience what it's like. To have a part in Jesus Christ. What a shame on us. Yeah. I mean, what a shame on us where, where we'll sit comfortably in a pew week after week. And we're more, we're more concerned about where we're going to eat after the service than we are about, you know, people going, dying and going to hell. Yeah. I'm not trying to browbeat you tonight, but listen, church isn't for comfort. Church isn't so that we can sit here and fellowship with our brothers and sisters alone. Right. We're trying to bring in the people that disagree with us. We're trying to get the lost sinners Amen. saved and brought into church. You know, there's a lot of people that are dressed real nice tonight. But as far as the Sunday morning crowd, we come in in our suits and ties. I think it'd be nice to see a couple people dressed in some rags. I think it'd be nice to see a, a couple people come in yeah. and they don't look so great. Because you know what that tells me? We're going out into every part of the world yeah. teaching. And we're going out into every Amen. part. And we're preaching the gospel, trying to get people into church. Amen. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. We need to identify the enemy. And we can't underestimate the enemy either. There's some things you may not know about Satan. Satan is the enemy of the truth. Satan knows the truth. He's mentioned in Matthew 4 and chapter 6, quoting scripture. He quotes Psalm 91, 11 through 12, through 12, and trying to tempt Jesus, where he takes him on the pinnacle, and he tells him, you know, jump down, and the angels will come and grab you up, so that you won't dash your foot against a stone. That's such an odd way to phrase, you know, what he's trying to say, until you realize where it says that in the Bible. You know, I've heard that phrase before, over in Psalms. Satan knows the truth. And you know what's more dangerous and a lot of the reason that we have people deceived today? is the, What's more dangerous than not knowing the Bible is knowing just enough about the Bible to take it out of context yeah. and use yeah. it in an in a evil way. You know, today we have so many churches, churches that 
are not using the book. They're not using the Bible, and they're they're getting the crowds. They're getting people in there, and they're they're having you know a couple thousand on Sunday mornings, and all they're doing is rocking out to Jesus. All they're doing yeah. is they have their smoke machines going, and they're up there singing and and, and dancing yeah. around and stuff. And all that is is a poison to those young young. Maybe they're saved, you know, young Christians who they're going to grow up. They're they're going to get older, I should say, and never grow up in the Lord. They're going to get older and they're going to be right. weak. And you know what? There's ne you're never going to see fruit out of that. You're going to see they're going to be uh, they're going to be unproductive Christians. They're not going to be going out and soul winning because they're never going to be taught that. They're going to say, you know, maybe learn to play the bass and then you know you can come up on stage and jam with us. But aside from that, just come to the church. We just want your money. You know, that's about it. That's all that's yeah. required of them. And today we have to know that. You know, this Bible is all we have. This, this King James Bible is all we have. And we can't give it up. We can't start taking verses willy-nilly out of context. Right. You know, it's going to poison those people who are so already so fragile, those baby Christians who we need so much to train and to help in our fight. Satan perverts the truth. 450 plus perversions of the Bible have been released. You know, it's there's a... Uh, a, a huge disagreement about the Greek language and how they derive all these different words from the Greek. You know, and despite anyone, what anyone will tell you, uh, the masters, the scholars of the Greek language don't agree on everything. The different words that they get. And why is that important? Because the Bibles, the Bibles that they use to translate and they make into their, what, the ESV or the NIV or whatever, they're all taking these Greek words and taking the most watered down, unspecific meanings out of these words. And we're supposed to use those to try and win souls. That takes the power yeah. out of the yeah. word of God. Sure. You know, and we all, yeah. we all know in Revelation where it talks about how any man who changes or takes away or adds That's from the right. Bible, yeah. well, their name will be blotted out of the book of life. Right. You know, how guilty is the nation of that today? We have politicians praying in Jesus' name, or not in Jesus' name, they're saying, uh, like he said this morning, talking about, oh, holy of holies or whatever, and they're ending their prayer with amen and amen women. What? No. That doesn't make any sense at all. But we live in the day and age where that's acceptable because you know what? I can't even point a finger at it. All I can say is, oh, you know, that's what he practices religiously. I'll get persecuted if I say anything against it. Today, if someone were to walk into a woman's bathroom as a man, this just happened in California, you can't even say anything about it. You're going to face jail time for saying anything about it because we've changed the truth of God into a lie. Satan has supplanted the thought in your head that you are God. And it's easy to feed into it. It's easy for each and every one of us to believe it. And why? Because God, you can't see him right here. You can see yourself and you can see what you can do for you. But until you acknowledge that everything good, everything you have in life came from the Lord, you'll have that selfish, you'll have that self-absorbed mindset in life. You'll have that... Uh, that you'll have that mindset where you'll be on your way to church and you see somebody banging on the side of the street and you'll just blow them off. You know, you'll have that mindset where you say, I'm more important. It's about me. Now, this is mainly for the unsaved. This is mainly for the people who don't know who God is, who's never had the opportunity. They are the ones who've been convinced that they are God, whether they know it or not. But how, how can we as Christians... How can we as Christians sit by and not evangelize and teach them? Yeah. We're dealing with an enemy today. Satan will have to face the truth. The truth is that Satan will be cast into the pit. He will bow his knee and confess that Jesus is Lord. He will be cast in the lake of fire with the beast and the false prophet. And Satan will lose. Yeah. And that's where we stand yeah. today. We know that we're on the winning side. Yeah. We know that no matter what, this, the auspices of this world can never breach our salvation. They can never stop us from serving the Lord. What a motivator to know. You know if you knew you were going to win yeah. in the end. Wouldn't you be a little bit more excited about serving the Lord? You know you're going to win. And one thing that we know is that, you know, it's nice It's nice to take the team, you know, after you win, go out to ice cream or something like that. Don't you want the team to get bigger, get a bigger team going out and taking uh, the souls that would have never had a chance without you and getting that man on it, going to heaven and worshiping and praising Jesus Christ? 
I look forward to that day where we do see Satan cast into the lake of fire. Yes. I look forward to the day where yes. we see them bow the knee, Satan yes. and his, his yes. minions on this earth bow the knee. Yes. And as much yes. as I want to get mad at Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, I want to get mad at even Joe Biden, I want to get mad at these people, just know that you could have been the same way. You could have grown yeah. up that way. And you know what? The Lord still wants them. The right. Lord still wants right. to see them saved. Hey. And we spend our, so much of our time hating it that we miss the, the whole goal is to see them saved. And we have to fight back. There's no question about that. We can't just say, well, we have to love everybody. and we can't. No, we have to fight back. But we need to make sure that we're not fighting back with our political views. We're fighting back with the Bible. Amen. Because that's the only thing that has any power. Right. That's the only thing that will save. That's the only thing that will change. The only way to combat the big lie is with the truth. You must first know the truth in order to use the tr truth. Yeah, yeah. Second Timothy uh, chapter 2, verses 15 through 16, where it says, Study to show thyself approved yeah. unto God, a workman, yeah. have, need not to be ashamed. Yeah. You know, each and every one of us have a responsibility to this book. Yeah. We have a responsibility to the Bible to be able to show why we believe what we believe. We have a responsibility to the lost world to bring them this word. And if we don't, that's because we didn't use the tool that God gave us. It's right here for us. Yeah. If we don't use the Bible to give out the gospel, well, we're failing as Christians. You must believe the truth above all else. Turn over to Romans again in chapter 3. Romans chapter 3, and we'll be in verse 3. Romans chapter 3 verse 3 says For what if some did not believe Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect God forbid Yea let God be true but every man a liar As is written that thou mightest be justified In thy sayings and mightest overcome When thou art judged You know we have to know for sure 100% that this Bible is above all else We have to know that Even if President Trump came out and said You know you don't need to go to church anymore because, you know, it's too dangerous. Even if somebody you respected, uh, even if, you know, a father figure in your life told you that you shouldn't be going out knocking on doors because someone could shoot you, someone would get mad at you. That doesn't matter because every man is a liar and God is true. Yeah. Each and every one of us have that responsibility to take the word of God and not to be afraid of what the world will do. Not to be afraid of what, what the world will say about us, but... To continue spreading the gospel. You must never stop sharing the truth with those around you. And we must not listen to lies any longer. It's Proverbs 19.27 over there. Uh, where we, I, I read it uh, on the back table. There was a book and it had it right on the front. Proverbs 19.27. I'll read for you here in a second. But I also want to read. There's a, uh, there's a, a lecture. Or I, I guess maybe a speech given by a man named Paul Harvey back in the 60s. And uh, about kind of where he saw the world going. And I want to show you that here in a second. But Proverbs 19.27 says, Cease, my son, to hear the instruction that causes the air for the words of knowledge. Yeah. Listen, we may not be able to just block our ears off from physically hearing it, but we can't listen to that garbage anymore. We can't listen to the garbage that says you can't teach your kids Christian values. You can't homeschool your kids and teach them that there's two genders. You can't homeschool your kids and teach them that you know uh, that you should have a handout for everything, uh, or that you shouldn't have a handout for everything. That we need to abolish capitalism. That everyone should be equal, no matter why how you get there. Everyone should be equal. That's dangerous. Yep. That will destroy us after a certain amount of time. Right. If we're all expecting a handout, there's no ambition. Right. Nobody will ever do anything right. out of their own, you know, work ethic. They'll just wait for the government to hand it right to them. This letter from Paul Harvey, I believe it was uh, read on television at the time, but it says, it's called, If I Were the Devil. And I want you to listen here, and it's a sobering thought. It says, if I were the prince of darkness, I would want to engulf the whole world in darkness. I'd have a third of its real estate and four-fifths of its population. But I would not be happy until I had seized the, seized the ripest apple on the tree, the So I would set out about however necessary to take over the United States. I'd subvert the churches first, and I would begin with the campaign of whispers. With the wisdom of a serpent, 
I will whisper to you as I whisper to Eve, do as you please. To the young, I will whisper that the Bible is a myth. I will convince the children that man created God instead of the other way around. That I confide that what's bad is good and what's good is square. And the old, I would teach to pray after me, our Father, which are in Washington. And then I'd get organized. I'd educate authors in how to make lurid literature exciting so that anything else would appear dull and uninteresting. I'd peddle narcotics to whom I could. I'd sell alcohol to ladies and gentlemen of distinction. I'd tranquilize the rest with pills. If I were the devil, I'd soon have families at war with themselves, churches at war with themselves, and nations at war with themselves until each in its turn was consumed. And with promises of higher ratings, I'd have mesmerizing media fanning the flames. If I were the devil, I would encourage schools to refine young intellect, but neglect to discipline emotions. I'd tell teachers to let those students run wild. And before you knew it, you'd have drug-sniffing dogs and metal detectors at every schoolhouse door. Within a decade, I'd have prisons overflowing and judges promoting pornography. Soon, I would evict God from the courthouse and the schoolhouse, and then from the House of Congress. And in his own churches, I would substitute psychology for religion and deify science. I'd lure priests and pastors into misusing boys and girls and church money. If I were the devil, I'd take from those who have and give to those who wanted until I had killed the incentive of the ambitious. Yeah. What do you bet I couldn't get whole states to promote gambling as the way to get rich? I'd convince the young that marriage is old-fashioned, that swinging is more fun, and that what you see on television is the way to be. And thus, I could undress you in public and lure you into bed with diseases for which there are no cures. In other words, if I were the devil, I'd just keep on right on doing what he's doing. Yeah. How, it's almost prophetic. Yeah. Yeah. That was written in 63. It's almost prophetic. And the fact is, today, we're seeing it all unfold around us. Yeah. Now, the Bible was already taken out of schools. Prayer was already taken out of schools then. But now we're not just taking the Bible and prayer out of schools. We're substituting it with some sort of race and gender infused religion does anyone know what i'm talking about <laughs> critical yeah. race theory yeah. uh gender yeah. critical gender theory this stuff is nasty and you know what this yeah. isn't this this yeah this isn't just a substitute for uh, a political behavior it's a religion that's right it's yeah. turned into a religion it's a religion of wokeness and yeah. each and every one of us can look around and identify that there is there's a presence of humanism in this world, where we have turned ourselves into God. You know, if our dollar were really honest, it would say, in pleasure we trust. Yeah. It's not about God anymore. Yeah. This nation was built on God, but it's not about God anymore. It's about you. It's about feeling comfortable in your own skin, whether your own skin is a completely opposite person than you think you are. It's about making everyone else succumb to your own carnal desires. But you know what? The only cure for that is not getting a Donald Trump back in the White House. The, the, the only cure for that is not seeing some reformation of conservatives stand up and say, you know, we won't take it anymore. Because it's not enough to push back. It's not enough to push back against this. We need to start evangelizing these people. We need to start really when they're young, when people are young, getting people into church. And seeing them saved, because as much as I think you know, uh, political uh, movement would help. You know, if you got these people saved at a young age, they would never develop these crazy theories. They would never go into a political office and start forcing through government power down your throat their 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 weird and messed up views. I have a feeling if we raise more preachers, if we raise yes. more more hey. Christians. We wouldn't have to worry about who's taking office as much because we'd see so much more of a moral society. We see so much more of a God-fearing society. And that's what we've lost today. We've lost that fear of God. We've lost the idea that God is outside of us. We are the create. We are the creature. He is the creator. Amen. And the reason we were sent here and the reason we were born is for his pleasure. Amen. And today we live as it is as it is it as if. It is our, for our pleasure. And as if we are the ones who are meant to be satisfied. We are the ones who are the ones who create morality. We have a goal, we have a vision, and we have a passion and a purpose. And that is to see more saved. And here at Grace Baptist Church, I don't think we struggle with our soul winning efforts. But identifying the enemy 
has been a hard thing for me personally. Identifying the enemy. We know Satan's there, but we want so, so much more to get mad at the people he's using than to fight back. We want to say, we want to argue with their views of Marxism and stuff. We want to argue the case for capitalism. Let's argue for the case for Christ. Yeah. Let's argue for the case for Christ because God promotes the values we hold. And until they get saved, they will not understand. They will not get it. Why we're fighting the way we are. They will not get it. We want to make sure we're doing our job as Christians today. I would hate to see in the next in my lifetime, before the rapture happens, I would hate to see the day where you know we can't send our, our kids to a Christian school anymore. They're shutting them down. I, I don't want to see the day where they're gonna to have to they're gonna send police officers to your church and or or maybe they'll send constituents to your church to make sure you're saying everything is politically correct. Well, we wouldn't let them in, right? <laughs> but They'll try and shut you down if you say something like a man is a man and a woman is a woman. I don't want to see that day. The only way we can fight back against the big lie is by spreading the truth of the gospel. Let's close in a word of prayer. Dear Lord, I thank you for this day, Lord, and I just appreciate what you've done for us, Lord, and just the fact that you've given us the truth. Lord, help us not to take it for granted. Lord, I pray that we would do our job and evangelize this world.